All right, we are back from the architectural branding tour here in New York. Uh, I'm with Ursula Raffeld again. So Ursula, what's the summary assessment? What we've seen is great interior spaces, but not really the great benchmarks in architectural branding, I see. I see. Um, so why is that? Why, why do you not find great architectural branding benchmarks in New York City? These are so many restrictions on the architectural side regarding the urban spaces you have to create new architectural styles. That would be a major restriction here in New York. So what can you do actually as a manager? You really have to consider where you build your architectural. So like in Sony, uh, in Sony, I'm saying, I like, well, Sony should probably also think about architectural <laughs> branding. In fact, they have in the Sony Center in Berlin. In I Berlin, believe, there's yeah. a huge example. But I didn't want to say Sony, I wanted to say Soho. As we had seen in Soho, uh, uh, Mango, right, goes into this uh, old building that was originally owned by the uh, Singer um, um, Sewing Machine Company, right? So I guess that's one of the uh, considerations, right? Yes, you can make historical links to the okay. brand. You can find places that are really that fit your brand, but you also could create a promising architectural concept as Audi does at the moment with a new retailing concept that is really applicable to different urban spaces so they get more flexibility into the retailing concept which makes sense. I uh, see so before they launched their global retailing concept they actually checked out various spaces and made sure that the concept fits into those yeah. spaces. No I think that's good. a very very good idea. Now I have a last question do you think all of this is worth its money? I mean you said that the Prada store and there they didn't do much architectural mm -hmm. branding cost what was it 40 million us dollars and that was like i don't know eight years ago the bmw world which was finished a couple of years ago in 1999 i'm sorry in 2007 the bmw world cost how much it's actually 500 million 500 Euro. million euros all right so do you think that's is that worth the money that's really a huge investment in the brand and it's always tough to say whether the investment is worth like the is worth the reactions to the brand and the Well the reaction country. probably by most consumers is that they are saying um, this is a waste of money, right? This is one part of the customers. The other part you can see in the internet quite well there are lots and lots of hits like leading to the BMW world. It's a major touristic site now in Munich. People come there, people get enlightened by the brand. It's also a space where they focus and do concerts and cultural events. So they really I see. So it's part of social, social responsibility of the company, actually, co creating communities yeah. and all of that. And of course, a great life. image and da, 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 all that soft stuff, right? I mean, in terms of hard sales data, I, I'd be very critical about this. On the other hand, I must say, when I was with my students in Munich, um, uh, at the BMW world, several of them said, you know what, next time I'm going to buy a BMW. They love so that. So, this is one effect. And for the rest, maybe we have to ask So BMW. BMW that's teams. right. We should, we should check out. We should follow up on this over the years. Too. Maybe they publish some numbers in our... In our yeah, time. okay. Did you hear that BMW? We want to see numbers. We want to <laughs> see numbers on whether <laughs> architectural branding works or not. Well, um, we featured it, of course, on the Meet Schmidt channel because it is a hot, hot topic right now in branding, in marketing, and with respect to experience <laughs> management. So thank you very much, Ursula, for being on this uh, show and also for doing the tour with me. And uh, I hope uh, the viewers got some uh, useful advice for what to do with buildings and their brands.